Hello everybody, this is Fun Police, and I am back with a short video covering the 1.13 update of Fire and Maneuver. A variety of notable changes has occurred in this patch, including an overhaul to the Skirmish trait, a variety of changes to the Ottoman faction and its unit roster, alongside a reworking of single player content, and even cosmetics. So, if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to like and subscribe as I'm going to continue making Fire and Maneuver content, and you won't want to miss out on that, especially as we're going to continue doing the unit guides, which I have just started up doing, and so far I've covered France and the Ottomans, and we'll be doing more in the future. Regardless, let's just jump into the patch notes. There is quite a lot here, so we'll start off by talking about the cosmetics. Uh... Now, cosmetics are actually in the game. You're able to move around and buy various cosmetics, ranging from three different tiers, from this bronze tier that costs 2500 the 5000 costing silver tiers, and then the incredibly expensive 15000 golden tiers. They all have different cosmetics, and I have gone ahead and spent most of my merits buying them. Uh, and I'll just show you off the ones I've bought so far. Sadly, I have not bought uh, a skin for the Italians because there's actually no skin available at the moment. Although there are more uh, cosmetics that will probably be coming out in future updates. And then also, I haven't bought my American nation because I've been wanting to buy the Union Soldier, but I bought everything else and now I don't have enough merits. So I guess it's a good time to get grinding. Regardless, let's talk about the more notable changes in balance so jumping into a quick lobby or we should actually jump into a lobby for the age of rifles so we'll move over to the ottoman empire since they received the most notable changes to their specific units but starting off with broad changes the first thing that has been changed is attack column now actually provides plus one damage on charges this means that a unit like the Bashi Bazook, which is in, which has the shock perk and is in attack column, will now deal a total of four damage as a baseline to its charge. Overall, a really nice change for melee based decks. As simply put, uh, shock is a powerful trait for melee, especially initiating it, and with the attack column, it is now a little bit more viable to. Uh, kind of throw yourself into melee because you're going to be dealing a little bit more damage. It's also very nice for units like Zwavs that have melee drilled because it is now able to attack column in and get a mini shock. In fact, if you attack column and melee drill triggers, then you're actually dealing the same amount of damage as shock would have normally done before this update. So that makes melee drill actually a lot more useful, which is something to keep in mind. However, melee has had a bit of a nerf because units will no longer infinitely follow enemy units until they get into a melee. So if the enemy moves out of range, your units won't endlessly follow them until the ends of the earth if they don't have the movement to do so. So this means that melee has to be a bit more... Uh, careful with it because it can't rely on getting free movements and if it tries to charge in and then doesn't catch anything it's going to be left open and potentially be annihilated another change is that the damage between reserve units has been changed so it's now evenly applied meaning that when you shoot at a unit it should now deal damage to both the front and the reserve unit it's no longer going to, for example, only deal damage to the frontal unit if you shoot at it from the back, is what I believe this is changing. Although the wording is a bit vague, and I apologize if I'm actually wrong. I'll leave a comment and pin it if I uh, get more concrete reading on it. 
the clashing system has had some bug fixes. But now let's talk about some of the more mo notable unit changes. So starting off is that the four cohesion units and five cohesion units have all had their cost increased by five points, meaning that they are now a little bit more expensive to run. Uh, I think this is overall a small but nice change. Four cohesion units and especially the five cohesion heavy infantry have been kind of warping the game around them and has made something like the three cohesion units a lot less worthwhile simply because why spend, you know, 50 points on a rifle unit when you could maybe just spend 55 and get a four cohesion unit? The cost differences just weren't large enough and as such, it just simply made sense to get uh, the more worthwhile uh, four cohesion and especially the five cohesion heavy infantry, often because they also had really strong perks. But now there's a little bit more cost to it, and you might be able to s fit in these three cohesion units into certain builds if you have that extra amount of funds that otherwise you now no longer have due to the higher cohesion uh, costing more. On top of that, we've also had a rework to skirmishing. Skirmishing now has a completely new effect that says it ignores fire flanking damage. So fire flanking damage is essentially when you get shot at from the side or the rear, which would normally deal significant amounts of bonus damage. Skirmishing units now completely ignore that. So as an example, this rifle unit, if it got shot in the back, would only take one to two points of damage, where other units would take upwards of four to five. This means that skirmishing is now a very, very interesting trait. And from my initial plays with it, it's actually very powerful. Being able to have your units play aggressively and essentially being immune to flanking means that they're able to get out in front of your army and actually do some heavy lifting. And the enemy is not able to severely punish you if they manage to push one of your flanks. Now, the skirmish perk does cost 20 points, so these units are not free to take. But overall, it's overall generally on the cheaper side to take uh, maybe some light infantry alongside what would be your otherwise regular line infantry. On top of that, we've had some changes to various maps. Starting out, we have a new map for American Civil War owners in Bull Run, and we also have the Wismborg map, a map for all players that is a French town. Uh, and I've played on this, and it's quite an interesting one, with multiple spawn points, uh, with players being able to essentially have units on both sides of the map, and having to kind of clash with each other in the middle. It's honestly a pretty fun map. I have actually not tried Bull Run yet, but maybe we'll load into that one. But for right now, we're going to go on River Path, because River Path has actually been updated. And now, the unit... Uh, there's been a variety of changes, so let's add an AI in real quick and build a super quick comp. And let's jump right into it. And see how everything does. So, some other changes that has happened is that orders have had a lot of bugs fixed, but we can see the changes to the... Uh, overall map of River Path. There are multiple forests here alongside some impassable terrain, uh, making this hill overall a lot more contestable and also a little bit harder to get to with your units. Let's just quickly out. Objectives have also been updated, I should note, in that they are now a little bit more balanced, uh, not only across maps, but also the fact that they're not ticking down as rapidly as other, as they did previously, which is a nice change, because, to be honest, objective was a little bit frustrating, because essentially players could just bum rush a objective, and when they got there, they would just win. But with three objectives, you now have a bit of an interesting dynamic, 
where you're generally going to control one, have to contest the middle one, but can also potentially try to take the enemy's other objective. There's also been some nice quality of life things. Notably, there is a variety of hotkeys that you're able to use uh, that are going to allow you to do a variety of things quite quickly. Uh, which will overall just save on having to click and drag all your units. For example, holding shift, I can change this unit's uh, various formations. And holding shift Z or control Z, I'm able to change their formations and undo orders, allowing me to play with quite quickly if I wanted to change their formation. I find this was really useful in some of the speed matches that I was playing around in. Uh, but we can overall see just a variety of different options going on. A nice thing also is that the orders have seemingly been fixed in that when you undo one an order for one unit, it will not undo all of the orders. So you can, for example, have a unit change formation and it won't automatically cancel its fire orders and stuff like that. Uh, which is a nice thing because in a 60 second timer, having to reorder a unit multiple times as you make up your mind was kind of annoying. There's also been some visual changes to things like roads, uh, and there's also just a variety of other smaller changes. But those are the main changes within the game. Let's back out of this and head over to the other major rework, and that is campaigns. The single player content has seen a variety of different events happen. Most notably, the Crimean campaign has just been overall completely reworked. It's available now to what? Ooh, this is the wrong campaign. Let me. My apologies. This one, this is the correct one. So, if you've played the Crimean campaign at all, this is quite different to what it looked like previously. Uh, and you're going to have to, uh, overall, just play around with it again. Uh, gives a fresh take on the campaign. And also introduces uh, some unique things. Like, as an example, there was a difficulty slider that you could now tweak which adds a very nice amount of difficulty by adding more enemy units alongside giving them more powerful units to work with. This is overall a pretty nice uh, change, and personally, I haven't played a whole lot with the single-player content, but I know some people really do enjoy it, so this is a very welcome change. Beyond that, there's also been a variety of bug fixes and also some UI updates. But that is mostly it for the patch, so that is where I'm going to end this video. A quicker one today, just covering some of the bigger changes. I overall do like the changes to skirmishing, the cost increases, and other various changes. Uh, so let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of this update? And also, uh, let me know if there's anything you'd be interested in re related to fire and maneuver. For example, there was some content revealed for the upcoming Boshin War, and I could maybe make an update video on that, but I'm interested to hear what you guys are in, well, looking to see. Otherwise, again, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe to not miss out on future content and also help my channel grow. And then that is all I have for you today. So thank you all so much for watching and have a good day.